This video is sponsored by Harting Technology Group. Harting Technology Group is 100% family-owned German company with experience of more than 75 years. Initially, it was concentrated on the production of everyday consumer goods, however, during these 75 years, Harting evolved into a global leader in supplying connectivity solutions for the three main branches of industrial technology – data, signals and power. Its portfolio also includes amazing custom-made solutions and products for railway systems. We invite you to check out the link in the description if you're curious to find out more about this interesting company. Thank you Harting for supporting Railways Explained and now let's get to the topic. Dear rail lovers, welcome back to Railways Explained. In the last two episodes on Railways Explained, we spoke about the German railways and the German high-speed rail system. Now, we are planning to talk about Made in Germany high-speed trains. As we mentioned, it all started with the Intercity Experimental Test Train, so let's see how this train was developed and how it became the ground zero for present IC trains. In our last video, we spoke about the dilemma that the German railways had, that is, whether to build dedicated passenger high-speed lines or to focus on the efficient organization of mixed traffic. Something similar happened concerning the traction system. Namely, by the time Germany started developing high-speed rail system, Japan and France already made some decisions on how the high-speed trains should be designed. What was characteristic for Japan, their Shinkansen trains have distributed traction, which means that traction motors are distributed throughout the train length and passengers sit along the full length except in the driver's cab. Moreover, the advantage of these train sets is low static axle loads, meaning less wear and tear for the track. The French, however, stood out for another principle. Their TGV train consists of two power cars and several passenger cars in between. The disadvantage of this principle is, for example, that about 17% of 200 meters long train does not produce fair revenues from seats. Given the success that the Deutsche Bundesbahn had with the class CT403 power car in 1972, able to develop 200 km per hour, it is no wonder that Germany also followed France's footsteps. By the middle of 1980, preparations for another prototype train also began, now named Intercity Experimental. The idea was that the manufacturing of the train needs to be completed by 1985, so it could be presented to the public on the 150th anniversary of the Bundesbahn. 94 million German marks were provided and the cost of production was split between the Federal Ministry for Research, DB and other companies. The train delivered on time in 1985 consisted of two class 410 power cars and up to three class 810 intermediate cars. The Intercity Experimental incorporated various design innovations from the fields of aeronautics and aerospace engineering to achieve excellent aerodynamic performance. The axles used solid monoblock wheels as well as air suspension. The braking system was especially noteworthy because it consisted of an electrical regenerative brake, mechanical disc brakes and a rail brake using eddy current. The class 410 entered service on 19th March 1985 and became the first train in Germany to pass the 300 km per hour mark. That happened on a test track between Bielefeld and Hamm on 26 October 1985, when it achieved 317 km per hour. It also set a new world speed record of 406.9 km per hour in May 1988. While IC Experimental was still being developed and tested, DB was so confident in its success that already in the summer of 1988, it ordered 60 train sets of the first generation class 401 IC1, manufactured by Siemens. It was designed to reach a maximum speed of 280 km per hour on new tracks and 200 km per hour on the existing tracks. The IC1 consisted of two identical power cars, one at each end, and 12 cars in between. Also, the IC1 had the Scharfenberg coupler that allow an IC train to be towed in case of an emergency but does not allow double heading of two IC trains. The exterior design of the Intercity Experimental by Alexander Neumeister with minor adjustments was applied. 
One of the distinctive features of the first generation trains is the restaurant car known as Board Restaurant. It features a 45 cm high roof with several windows, making it easy to spot from the outside. However, soon after the first IC1 started operation, complaints started coming in. Numerous passengers were worried about the train's lacking comfort, especially in this restaurant car, with humming noise from shaking plates, wandering glasses on the table and other kinds of unpleasant vibration. The problem was traced to the train's monoblock steel wheels, developing metal fatigue and out-of-round conditions and flat spots from uneven wear. Several solutions were worked out, including the changes to the tracks and developing air suspensions for the bogies. Fearing the high cost of either option, attention turned to the slowest kind of rail transport, the trams. Following the example of the wheels used by those slow-speed urban transport trains, the DB developed the wheel Bochum 84 Series 064, consisting of three pieces. An inner steel disc with a separate steel tire, with a 20mm thick hard rubber cushion between, allowing a certain degree of dampening not found in the solid monoblock wheels. Testing of this solution started in late January 1999 with 45 restaurant cars equipped with new wheels. As the results were satisfying, already on the 5th October the same year, the DB announced the end of the rumbling restaurant, with the new wheels being fitted to the whole fleet. After six years, on 3rd June 1998, an IC1 number 151 regularly traveled from Munich to Hamburg, carrying 287 passengers and six crew members. After stopping at Hanover, it approached the town of Eskid, which it will pass right through and continue towards Hamburg, running just one minute behind the schedule. However, as the train was traveling at 200 km per hour at 10.57 am, a tire from the forward axle on the rear bogey of the first passenger car snapped due to undiscovered fatigue cracks, unwound and drilled itself through the cabin floor, shooting out between two occupied seats and becoming stuck. This is how the derailment of this high-speed train occurred, after which it crashed into a road bridge. In this accident, known as the Eskid accident, 101 people were killed and 88 were injured. It remains the worst rail accident in the history of the Federal Republic of Germany and the worst high-speed rail disaster worldwide. Although the changed bogey contributed to the reduction of noise and vibration, the disintegration of the tire of a resilient wheel was a principal factor causing the Eskid accident. As a result, all trains have been retrofitted with the original solid monoblock wheels. Now, regarding the services, they were easily extended into Austria and Switzerland, although Swiss railways required a narrower pantograph. On the other side, international services to the Netherlands, Belgium and France were limited by incompatible signaling. France also objected that the IC1 trains are too wide and too heavy for the French gauge. It is also interesting to mention that 19 IC1 train sets used for service into Switzerland were equipped with the European train control system in 2007. The cost of 34 million Swiss francs was paid by the Swiss government. Spending tax money for retrofitting foreign trains has been a target of criticism in Switzerland, but Switzerland paid for the equipment after Deutsche Bahn had announced that they would not convert any of their high-speed services to ETCS cap signaling within the following 10 years. In the period from 2005 to 2008, DB overhauled 59 IC1 train sets, which extended their lifespan by about 15 years. Following the first 60 IC1 train sets, DB ordered 44 second generation IC2 class 402 in August 1993. These train sets were jointly manufactured by Siemens and Atrans. IC2 can reach maximum speed of 280 km per hour and it is shorter in length, so usually two IC2 trains are coupled to form a block train of similar dimensions as the original IC1. That's the case on the main routes, while they are being separated again to operate on routes with less traffic. Also, the IC2s are even closer to a conventional push-pull train than the IC1 because each train consists of only one locomotive called Powerhead, six passenger cars and a cab car. The passenger cars are very different from the IC1 cars despite the similar exterior. The weight has been significantly reduced and the passenger compartments have been removed in favor of a seating arrangement similar to an airplane. Following the tragic Eskid accident, DB fitted the IC2 with an early warning system to detect incipient damage to boogies and wheels. 
Sensors on each boogie detect the occurrence of cracks or other signs of wear from the boogie vibration profile. Apart from the ICE, only Eurostar services through the channel tunnel have this type of diagnostics. In the period from 2005 to 2008, DB overhauled 44 IC2 train sets, extending their lifespan by about 10 to 15 years. Following the IC2, DB faced a major decision on whether to stay with the present system of centralized traction or to develop new, distributed traction like the Japanese Shinkansen trains. The design goal of IC3 Class 403 was to create a higher-powered, lighter train. This was achieved by distributing its 16 traction motors underneath the whole train. Because the train does not have power cars, the whole length of the train is available for passenger seats. The lounge seats are located directly behind the driver, separated only by a glass wall. The 50 train sets were ordered in 1997 and specifically designed for the new high-speed line between Frankfurt and Cologne which is, as we said in the last video, exclusively for passenger traffic. Its maximum grade is only 4 per mil. Train sets were built by a consortium led by Siemens and Atrans, and they were labeled as the Velaro branded by Siemens. Thanks to this distributed traction arrangement, the IC3 is able to attain a starting acceleration never before known in the sector, and the train is licensed for 330 km per hour. However, on regular intercity express services, they run up to 300 km per hour. This vehicle comes with single as well as multi-traction and safety system capability. The multi-system version is intended as European variant for deployment on international railway networks such as in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Belgium, France and the Netherlands. The IC3M Class 406, where M stands for multi-system, was developed to operate international services under the four different electrification systems, including the support for various train protection systems. The DB ordered 13 of these units in 1994, while in 2007 the train was licensed for operation in the Netherlands, Belgium and France. On the French LGV Est, some trains reach a regular top speed of 320 km per hour. So far, 17 trains of this class have been produced. The new IC3 or Class 407 was ordered by DB in 2008 in the form of 15 Siemens Velaro D electric multiple unit trains. It is designed to run at speeds up to 320 km per hour on four different electrification systems. Velaro D is designed to be quieter, more reliable and more energy efficient than the IC3 Class 403 and 406. In June 2011, Deutsche Bahn ordered an additional Velaro D set in order to replace an IC3 MF set damaged in an accident in August 2010, while another train set was added to this delivery by Siemens as compensation for production delays. We should mention that Velaro D is extremely popular and that Spain's Renfe was the first to order Velaro trains, known as Velaro E. Wider versions were ordered by China for the Beijing-Tianjin high-speed rail line as China Railways CRH-3, and Russia for the Moscow-St. Petersburg and the St. petersburg nizhny Novgorod as Velaro Rus or Sapsan. Simultaneously with the IC3, Siemens developed trains with tilting technology, using much of the IC3 technical design. The Class 411 and 415 ICT electrical multiple units and Class 605 ICTD diesel multiple units were built with a similar interior and exterior design as IC3. They were specially designed for older railway lines, not suitable for high speeds. Maximum speed of these train sets is 230 km per hour. During 2008, DB announced a tender for the purchase of 100 to 130 new train sets with the aim of replacing the fleet modernization for intercity and Eurocity services. In tender, no specific train type was specified and DB did not intend to become involved in the design process. Both locomotive hauled trains such as Railjet or variations on the IC3 EMU design were considered to be options. The scope of the procurement was later expanded to include replacements for the IC1 and IC2 with a top speed of 280 km per hour, and the size of the order increased to up to 300 trains. The new trains were to be branded ICX. The bids were given by Alstom and Siemens, and you think you can guess who won the tender. In May 2011, the DB concluded a framework agreement with Siemens Mobility. 
At the time, that was the largest train contract that Siemens has ever won in its nearly 170 years of corporate history. In the same year, Siemens awarded the subcontract to the Bombarda mainly for the aerodynamic optimization of the design and supply of the body shells. The initial contract with Siemens specified a design allowing flexible train sets between 5 and 14 units with 24 different variants described, each composed of power car and trailer cars. Two main variants were a 7 car with 3 power cars with a top speed of 230 km per hour. These were to replace older locomotive hold trains for intercity and Eurocity services, and the second was a 10 car with 5 power cars and a top speed of 249 km per hour to replace old IC1 and IC2. On 5th March 2013, DB announced that it had approved a train set consisted of 12 cars for a speed of 250 km per hour that would raise capacity and replace in the base order the existing 10-car train. In this configuration, seating capacity would increase from 724 to 830 seats. We said that the name ICX was used for the trains during the initial stages of the procurement, but in the late 2015, the trains were rebranded as IC4, with class designation 412 by DB. In 2020, DB announced a further order of 13-car configuration with increased passenger capacity and a higher top speed, 265 km per hour, in public known as XXL ICE that will be able to carry 918 passengers. Together with its partner Bombarda, Siemens has developed a unique train concept motivated by a high degree of modularity and therefore flexibility of train composition. This means that the train can be optimally adapted to specific transport tasks in terms of acceleration speed and passenger capacity. The IC Force drive concept is based on the so-called power car concept, where power cars are not coupled at the beginning and end of the train set, but within the set itself. The train set consists of five types of cars. Non-powered end cars for train control, powered intermediate cars that can be used for sitting or to be service cars with pantographs, and non-powered intermediate cars that can be sitting cars, sitting cars with pantographs or on-board restaurant. All in all, DB will be receiving 1,511 cars which it can configure in few different ways. The 12-car and 13-car train sets will be operated in Germany, Austria and Switzerland. The shorter 7-car trains are planned for use in Germany and Austria. So, we can easily say that the IC4 will be the backbone of the DB's future long-distance network. After nearly 12 months of trials in commercial service on the Hamburg-Munich route, DB has put the first of its IC4 train sets into regular operation in December 2017. Let's mention one small problem that has arisen in the meantime. In contrast to all former IC trains, the car bodies of the IC4 are made of steel, exceeding them by 28 meters. In the process, laser welding is used for the first time for the rail vehicle construction with steel. During 2019, quality issues with the welds on the car bodies were identified. Therefore, in April 2019, DB announced that due to the problems with the car frames, will not take delivery of any further trains. On 17 July 2019, it was announced that Siemens, Bombarda and DB had come to an agreement in which the Siemens and Bombarda would fix the trains, but since these deviations do not preclude safe operation, the affected cars will be used in passenger service. Reworking began in 2020 and it will be completed by mid of 2023. These trains are certainly characterized by their longevity, with a service life of more than 30 years. For example, the IC Gutersloch IC1 has the multiple unit number of 158 and was put into service in June 1991. Since then it has reliably passed around 15 million kilometers, which is roughly 39 times the average distance from the Earth to the Moon. Also, the recycling quota for IC trains is more than 95%. The quota for IC3, for example, is 98.1%. On the screen you can see the number of train sets of all IC generations that are currently in operation according to the data for 2020. In total, it is the number of 311 train sets. This was the story about the German IC trains on Railways Explained. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your rail loving friends and of course subscribe to our channel and consider becoming our Patreon. Until the next time, goodbye.